There are a lot of different ways to alter the, uh, the appearance of wood, right? You got paint, stain, fire. And today I want to go over a really, really old technique that is completely natural and where you utilize iron derived from steel wool dissolved in vinegar that you apply to wood. There are tannins in wood. The tannins react with the iron that produces this gray color. Um, now, not all different kinds of woods have the same level of tannins in them. Oak is the wood species that's traditionally used for this because it has a lot of tannins in it. But I'm curious, how will different kinds of wood species actually work for this? What kind of colors can you get? I'm also thinking about when would you use this? What would be the most interesting usage of this? technique. Okay, I have a sample board. We have pine, maple, cherry, birch, mahogany, red oak, and white oak. 99% sure that's birch. 1% sure it might be beech, but I think it's birch. So in order to do this you don't need a whole lot of stuff. You need steel wool and you need vinegar. So first of all, what kind of steel wool? Well, any steel wool will work. It will just take longer to dissolve the coarser it is. So it's a good idea to just use the fine steel wool if you have it, but I would just use whatever you have. And then part number two is the vinegar. The question is like, what kind of vinegar do you need to use? Um, from my research, you just need something acidic. So I would just use whatever vinegar is the cheapest, whatever you have access to. I'm just using regular cleaning grade vinegar. Um, but I think you should be able to use pretty much anything you have. Then the, we have the third ingredient here, which is thyme. When I have done this, I have let it sit for weeks. But from what I read, some people let it sit for maybe 10 days. And that seems to be kind of at the low end of, of where you want to go. Or I've seen some people who actually heat this up slowly over a double boiler um, to quicken this process. Although I would be careful with that. I'm going to put some gloves on because um, you don't really want to get uh, iron stuff on your hands. This is where I have my, my iron. When you combine this you want to make sure that you that you have a lid and that you put like some air holes in the lid or that you don't close it all the way. Don't do what I did the first time I made this. I put this in a mason jar, a glass mason jar with a metal lid and of course the metal lid corroded and it was really hard to get off plus there's gases built up inside so you don't want to do that. And this is gonna just get darker too as it sits. Time is of a factor here, okay? And the liquid here just feels quite pink when you first put it on. This is a, a spoon in process. That's the wood is splitting a little bit. So mahogany, red oak. So, so far, um, the cherry is just like turning a, a more kind of a darker, beautiful shade of more reddish. Maple is quite gray, um, as of course white oak and red oak. Um, I'm curious though how much time it will take for it to turn more out. I'm gonna let this sit, develop fully, and then do another coat on parts of it, see if we can see a difference. I started to get interested in the concept of tannins over this past year as I got into natural fabric dyeing because tannins play such an interesting role. It acts as a pre-treatment of the fabric so that uh, the color will hold. Tannins have been used for, for ages when tanning leather, so taking hides from animal hides into leather by treating it. Traditionally, like oak bark is where the word tannin comes from. Oak bark, aka tannins. Let's just pause there for a moment. Why am I talking about tannins? Because tannins, a natural compound, or to be technical, a class of astringent polyphenolic biomolecules react to iron in a chemical way. Tannins plus iron equals gray. I've been trying to find a chart of the different tannin levels in different wood species and I haven't, I haven't been able to find it yet. But generally speaking, the darker the wood, the more tannins. Oak has a very high amount of tannins, but tannins also vary in the wood depending on conditions and the soil. And so it's not like a clinical thing where all oak are like exactly the same levels, for example. But oak products like acorns, for example, which is what I use when I... So one of the things that I do, 
<laughs> I gather acorns in the fall. I use that to create an acorn bath. And then I put fabric in that acorn bath, like white linen fabric. An acorn bath, in addition to just providing tannins to the fabric, which will make it more color fast, will also give it a, a slight brown shade. Here's an example of that. The higher concentration of the acorns, the, the darker the color. After you've done that, if you add some iron to this mix, the color of the fabric will change in front of your eyes. And it will go from something along these lines to something like this. So the color changes from this kind of beige, brownish to much more of a cooler gray color. Okay, it's been a couple of hours, so the stain has had enough time to completely set. And look at this. It's, it's pretty much the same dark gray, all the different woods. Or not all the different woods, but all of the darker woods. So we have oak, mahogany, cherry, maple. They're pretty much identical. I mean, more or less. Very similar color. And then the two kind of outliers here is the pine and the, the birch. Um, and these have more of the color of kind of a weathered gray, like a weathered color, which is also kind of cool. I'm kind of thrilled because this is the, <laughs> this is the exact kind of charcoal gray that I really like, especially in contrast with the natural wood. Okay, let's add some more. We have a new day. Um, this stuff has been sitting overnight now, so let's take a look at what it looks like. Okay, so this here, first coat, second coat, first, second, first, second. And the thing that really strikes me as I'm looking at this is that you get so much more of the iron color on the second coat here, like it's browner. It's almost like it reacted with the tannins more here, and here you're just getting more of, of a color of brown, more of that kind of rust color on top. Okay, so you remember the uh, equation tannin plus iron equals gray. What if we did tannin plus iron plus tannin? What if we add more tannin to it? So how can we do that? Uh, we'll add something that contains tannin. A tannin is in a lot of different things. One of which is tea. So here I have some Earl Grey tea. Let's brush on some tea and see, can we affect the color in that way? Now I'm particularly interested in what this is going to, how it's going to affect it, uh, especially for the woods that don't contain as many tannins, like the pine and the birch. We'll do it down like this. Brush on some tannins. And does it matter the order of things? Can you just do iron and then tannins? So it's been a couple of hours now and I think we're kind of at the point where I don't know if it's gonna get darker over the next couple of days or if this is it. First of all, I think that the pine piece here is, is quite interesting. So we have one coat, two coats and then tea. The tea added a lot on the first coat but not you know quite as much on the second coat. And here we have again tea, tea. Tea. This whole idea of adding additional tannins to iron, um, I'm not sure I would really mess around with that too much. I think I would just kind of stick with the, uh, with the iron solution. I'm, I'm quite su surprised at the level of tannins we got from this maple piece. It's very similar to the cherry. I didn't expect that. Pine is really what's standing out here. As well as the birch, of course. One of the projects that I have been working on lately is making wooden yo-yos. And this just happens to be red oak. So what do you say uh, we turn this one gray? So in terms of a recipe, um, I tend to use 
one pint that I filled with vinegar and I put in one of these steel wool thingies and let that dissolve. So how would you utilize this technique in an interesting way? Something a little bit larger. My first thought is flooring. If you had a, a, an oak floor and you wanted this kind of dramatic look, this would be a cool application, right? Then you need more, right? So let's say you get one of these five gallon buckets from the home improvement store. Right, get one with a lid too. And then you fill it with a gallon of vinegar. And um, to extrapolate here, you would need eight of these steel wool pieces. And then let it sit for, a, I would say, a couple of weeks with some holes in the lid. A gallon of stain will usually last, what, like three, four hundred square feet in terms of like floor. So that should give you enough for a, for a room, right? Now, I don't have an oak floor <laughs> I want to do this with at this moment. But what I do have, I have this piece <laughs> of oak. This is actually glued oak flooring um, that I've been saving for some project, <laughs> you know. It's actually been planed on both sides. It's a beautiful piece. Um, I'm thinking it'd be cool to stain this and put it up on the wall as like a texture piece to, to make an area a little bit more interesting. So let's do that. Let's brush the whole thing with iron. Now I'm just debating about how much iron to put on here. How dark do I want to get it? This is a nice color, but what if I wanted it to be a little bit lighter? So let's do a quick dilution. One spoonful of this. One spoonful of water. Let's try it here. Let's add one more spoonful. So diluted one to one, two to one, one to two. One part, one. Iron, water. One part iron, four part water. One part iron, two part water. Two, one, 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 two, one. I was really expecting a much more diluted um, effect here, but this is ridiculous. Look at this, four parts water to one part iron. In other words, a little bit of iron on tan and rich wood goes a long way. You know, let's reduce it further. Eight part water. Nine, ten, ten, one, eleven, twelve, twelve, one. Since it seems that even a quite a diluted solution will provide quite a dark results, I'm going to go with about a 50 50. So one part iron solution, one part water. Some people say that you should, uh, you know, strain the solution. I just kept it in. And all the steel wool, I mean, it's kind of a sludge at the bottom, but it's all pretty much gone. <laughs> so immediate. <laughs> of course, this raises the grain too. So if you're concerned about that, you'll have to, uh, you know, sand it down once you're done a little bit. So put this on the wall and I think it really, it looks kind of cool. It anchors the place in a way, it adds texture to the wall, right? So we have iron dyed fabric, iron dyed wood. It's like when you look at it though, wouldn't it be cool to have like a whole accent wall in this color or a flooring? I just really like the gradient color here and it feels very kind of grayish bluish a very cool temperature on here i think that looks kind of cool so i really like it so this was diluted with, with one part of the uh, uh, the iron solution and one part water still got pretty dark didn't it good example too of how different pieces of the oak you know have different levels of tannin so this one doesn't have as much this one has more 
Um, but yeah, always um, thanks much for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can check out our Patreon or the shop at darpingover.com for various products that we create here in the workshop. Thanks so much for watching, guys, um, and I'll see you soon. Bye.